the following is a special multimedia presentation from NorthJerseySports.com. Brought to you by the Bergen County Education Association. Bergen County Public Schools work because the BCEA works with you. We are talking to NorthJerseySports.com original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey basketball and this is our Bergen County Jamboree round of 16 review slash quarterfinal preview I am Corey Doviak being joined by the usual cast of characters here on Talking Hoops Bergenfield Athletic Director Tom Curry Tom what's going on Corey how are you it was a bad day to be a bear on Saturday I'll tell you that we I don't know what happened to us, but give the credit to Pascal Kills. Boy, did they show up and play hard and do a great job. Absolutely. We will talk about that, the Bergenfield loss to Pascal Kills this past weekend. But first, let's welcome in our NorthJerseySports.com basketball insider, Richie Ballgame Barton. What's going on, Richie B? Not much. Can you say to talk some hoops as usual? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's jump right into Well, first of all, let's take care of the business end of this first. The social media aspect, follow us on Twitter, NJSCOM is our handle. And if you're looking for old shows of Talking Hoops, they are all archived on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash North Jersey Sports. So everything is right there for you. All right, let's talk some Bergen County Jamboree basketball. And this past weekend, obviously, we had the round of 16 uh, Bergenfield was the number four, and let's get into that first. We'll, we'll talk about Pascal Kills. I mean, I, I think from I covered that game, and from my end, I think it said less about the fact that Bergenfield is a good team. They proved the Bears have proved themselves to be a good team this year, all year. I just think that Pascal Kills and Tom, you can maybe back me up on this playing as playing as well as anybody in Bergen County right now. Corey, they did a great job. Uh, they, they they penetrated. They found each other. The interior passing was terrific. And, uh, they, they really, they found the open man all, all day. And, you know, we played, as you know, Marty Rivard does a great job defensively. Yep. And we played pretty good defense and, and they got through us all day. So give the credit to Coach Kirkby and the, and the, and the Cowboys. They did a great job on Saturday. Yeah. And the thing about Pascal Kills, you know, I'd seen him last Thursday against Westwood and the, the kid Andrew Nathan went nuts. He had scored 12 points in the third quarter as they opened that game up. And then you come into the Bergenfield game, and it's somebody else. I mean, they have an eight-man rotation. Kirkby told me afterwards that he's comfortable. If any of those eight, he could throw them in a hat, throw out a starting five, and he's comfortable with it. And the thing is, you know, you're you're an opposing coach and opposing team. And you're like, all right, we're into their bench. Here's their eighth man. That kid runs right to the corner and hits a three-pointer. I mean, there's no drop-off there. I, uh, they have a couple of options up front, a couple of options in the backcourt. They're well balanced, and all that other kind of stuff. Let's look around more now. Richie B, you were you did two games at the Jambo this weekend as well, and yeah, I guess we'll start off with top seeded Don Bosco Prep. You know what? I should mention before we get into that our guest list for tonight, which I meant to do right after the social media, but as you get older, the memory starts to fade. We have a great show here tonight because. We will not only have one Tom Curry on, we will bring on Tom Curry Jr., the head coach of Indian Hills, whose team pulled uh, the win out over Pascac Valley. Second half comeback, a great job by the Braves. So he will join us. And it is Tom Curry, this is your life night on Talking Hoops as we bring on St. Joseph Regional head coach Mike Doherty, who played for you as a freshman at St. Joseph Regional. So, Tom, yeah, are you excited about this? I'm excited. Ironically, both both guys played the same position, point guard, and uh, both were very, very. They were excellent point guards. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, well, good students as well of the game, as it has shown. It's the Tom Curry coaching tree here on Talking Hoops. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it is going to be fun to have both of those guys on. So, let's get back to it now, Richie B. Indian Hills' next opponent is Don Bosco Prep. You saw the top-seeded Ironmen. Uh, and, listen, I've seen Fairlawn a couple of times this year. They're a good team. I know it. And Don Bosco Prep kind of took my part a little bit. They sure did. And it was Paul Jorgensen that did it. Um, you know, having seen him play over the past couple of years, he, he always seems to show flashes like, wow, this guy's the best guard in the county, no doubt. And then he'll have, he would have flashes where he'd be like, wow, he's – killing him out there but uh, you know as a senior now way more poised 
way more confident. Uh, Division one scholarship to George Washington in his back pocket. I mean, he he completely controlled the game in in every aspect. Uh, but I mean, he just he didn't turn the ball over. He took smart shots, and when he took them, he made them. Yeah. And I, I mean, on that day, he certainly looked. Now he did look like the best. He looked like the best player in the county. I uh, he was. They they just couldn't do anything to stop him. Yeah. And when he gets on a roll like that, he is tough to stop. They they got a lot of options at Bosco. You know, I think when they lost to Clifton last week, everybody was like, oh, they're you know they're ripe for the picking here. But uh, they quashed all of that not only in the win against Fairlawn, but then also last night when they beat Bergen Catholic, and they've handed Bergen Catholic their only two losses of the season. You know, and, we go, and go I, I think I think being you know a you know they have a lot of seniors that play a lot of minutes. I think last year the Fairlawn game. Even after a loss, uh, an upset loss could have given them a lot of problems. But they just, you know, talking to Paul after the game, he's like, hey, you know, we lost. Can't do anything about it. Just got to go out and play the next one. And that's what they did. Yeah, and having Jack Ely healthy in this jambo has certainly uh, lengthened them out a little bit. Yeah, he's a big key for them as well. He's, a th- I mean, he's a threat. He's, yeah, he's definitely lengthened them out, and he's a threat. You got to watch him on the outside, and he could also get to the rim too. So, you know, that, that space is the floor a little bit. Yeah, and the other game you covered was Rampo Westwood. Rampo, the number five seed, took care of business there. They're moving on, and they'll face Pascac Hills in the quarterfinals. Now, we'll get into the Pascac Valley Indian Hills game a little bit later when we bring on Tom Curry Jr., so I'll just uh, leave it at that for now. And, Richie, you know, and Tom, too, as a member of the, the committee here, Tom, this is actually better suited for you. You know, because the schedule got changed because of the potential for snow, they moved everything to Saturday. And everybody looked at the matchups, I think, across the county, across the board, fans and everybody else who wanted to go see Jambo games. We're going to go to Northern Highlands because those were four, you know, well, three competitive matchups supposedly and then the top seed being there. Meanwhile, the Tenafly site got moved from Sunday to Saturday. You figure there's going to be four blowouts looking at seeds and history. And then here comes Glenrock, the number 23 seed that beat number 10 Creskill in the first round. Then they're down double digits to Dwight Morrow, who was, you know, as hot as a firecracker going into that game. And, you, Tom, I mean, Glenn Rock knocking off Dwight Morrow, your reaction to that? Well, uh, Glenn Rock's well coached, and, and they do a great job. I mean, you know, Dwight Morrow can run eight, nine kids at you. Again, kind of like Bosco, where they're just going to control the tempo. And, uh, you know, but one of the things about a team that presses, if you break their press, they can break down pretty quick. And I... Uh, when I, I didn't see the game. Obviously, I was at Golden Islands, but I heard Glenrock did a great job handling their press in the late stages. And, and if you do that, you're going to score laughs and, and take the game out of a pressing team's hand. So that is that was probably the key to their victory. I mean, Glenrock's done a nice job. Those are two really solid wins over good basketball programs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, you know. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, yeah, and again, you know what? You know, first of all, Glenrock. It's having really a great year for a program that, you know, has struggled for, you know, most of the time we've been covering them over the past, you know, 14, 15 years. Um, But the thing about Englewood is, you know, they're going to run out there and they're going to say, we're going to, we're going to play our style. And if you beat us, you beat us. And if we beat you, we beat you. You know, they don't, you know, they, they try to just force the tempo for 32 minutes. But as coach said, uh, Curry, you know, when it doesn't work, you know, what do you do? Yeah. And, you, you, you know, what you know I mean, they're up, they're, they're up, they're, the, the thing about that, I mean, what a helter skelter game. Glenn Rock is up eight at the half. Uh, they're down nine at the start of the third quarter. Englewood's up 11 with four minutes to go and loses in regulation. Right. I mean, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just kind of pull the ball out and run a little clock. Well, that's the point I was going to bring up because I covered Dwight Morrow when they played Cliffside in the game, you know, last week heading into this round of the Jambo. I talked to Ozzy, uh, Don, Donald Osborne, the head coach of Dwight Morrow afterwards, and even my story's premise was about the fact that it doesn't matter what you're going to do against Dwight Morrow because they're going to run their stuff, which is 32 minutes of high-pressure basketball, trying to get out in the open floor, trying to turn you over give up a layup here and there so that they get two on the other end. And, you know, they, they want to force the tempo. But, you know, with that comes what you guys were talking about is that with 
uh, an 11 point lead in the final four minutes, you know, the textbook of basketball says, okay, especially with no shot clock, let's run a little clock here. That's not in the Dwight Morrow playbook. And, you know, sometimes, Tom, you, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Well, I, I, if I had a dollar for every time I told asked a kid, are you kidding me? It's our, it's our ball, it's our gym, and we got the clock and we got the lead. What are you doing shooting? And right. uh, you know, let's 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 try to have them beat us, not beat ourselves. Uh, you know, and again, I wasn't at the game, but I do know that once you get to the you know the, the county tournament and you're playing some of these better teams that can like uh, Don Bosco, like uh, even a team that can set up and break you down, you got to be able to change the tempo and do some different things. It's it just it's it's a better it's a better way to go about things sometimes to, to make you last a little longer and, and win some games that. It'll, it'll help you. You'll get to the final four, and maybe get to the finals. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, and that was so that was the eye opener of the round of sixteen. The other three games at Tenafly, kind of you know, Bergen Catholic whacked Elmwood Park. We had Kevin Tuey on last week here on Talking Hoops, and it, Elmwood Park did a great job just to get to that round. But forty points was the spread with uh, Bergen Catholic winning that one. St. Joseph Regional take took care of business. We'll talk about that with Mike Doherty coming up shortly. And three-time defending champion Teaneck, the beat just rolls on for the Highwaymen. And, Tom, I don't know if you've gotten to see them this year. I don't know if Bergenfield's playing them, if they've come through your gym or, or whatever, but I really like this Teaneck team. You know, the, the last couple of years, it was a matter of keeping the big guys happy. You know, Shakir Lindsay had the ball in his hands. You know, feed Joel Hernandez, let him get his points and go to the hoop, and that was certainly an effective way for them to play basketball because it resulted in – with those two guys, really, after Chris Jones left, two straight Bergen County championships. Chris, Chris Jones was the year before that. Uh, but now this year, it's a different team. I mean, Leandre Washington is the new point guard. Miles McLeod in the middle. Uh, just you, you don't want to say role players with Teaneck because they're more talented than that, than that. The other kids are not just role players, but they do play roles game in, game out, where if it's that guy's night to score, then that's the guy who gets the ball, and I think it shows that Jerome Smart is doing a great job this year. Oh, absolutely. That freshman point guard is something else, DeAndre. He he breaks people down, and not only does he break you down, but he can score himself, and and that's a tremendous advantage for a high school point guard. If you can do that, you're just going to go places, and and I think they go as he goes. So I think the key to beating Keenick is to take him out of the game. And I don't know how he's going to do that. Nobody's really been able to do it so far. So I think that is, that is the question that has to be answered if you're going to play Teaneck. And he's a freshman. Yeah, and he's a freshman. So you've got to guard him for the next three years. You know, which brings up another point. You know, it, there's so much parity in Bergen County. Uh, and again, it's the, the Big North, there's no easy games. You know, you talk to my son later. They, they've lost uh, four games by a total of about nine points. There's no easy games in the Big North. You got every night. You got to lace them up and play hard. So yeah. it's 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 a tough league. And so is the NJIC. And some of the some of the some of those games are tough. You got to play. So yeah. it's, it's a great great year in Bergen County basketball. It is, and and North Jersey basketball too. I mean, I, I showed up on a, a wacky Tuesday night to see Fairlawn Passaic Valley last night, and Fairlawn wins on a buzzer beater. Uh, great game, you know. I just it was in the right place at the right time. But those are the games that are going on across North Jersey, night in, night out, in these conferences too. And I, I think that these teams being ta- battle tested has shown up in both the Bergen County tournament and the Passaic County tournament to this point, where we're seeing, you know, uh, a team like, uh, you know, Pickett, Indian Hills, who w- w- didn't wilt when they went down big to a team like uh, Pascac Valley, but. Let's talk more about that as we welcome in our first guest of the evening here on Talking Hoops on NorthJerseySports.com. Not only do we have one Tom Curry, our co-host, we now add a second as Tom Curry Jr., the head coach of the Indian Hills boys basketball teams, joins us. And Tom, before we get into the myriad of things that I want to talk about, thanks for joining us here on Talking Hoops. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on. Well, it is our pleasure, and it, it I hate to say it because I, I think I speak for more than one guy on the show when I say that watching you coach a basketball game makes me feel very, very old. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine. I've had a lot of people say that to me. I've had, um, I've had coaches say that I coached against you. I've had officials say that. I, I remember when you were still playing, so it, uh, I guess it's bringing back a lot for people. 
yeah, no, it was, I, I do remember you as the uh, point guard of that Dwight, that great Dwight Angle would run. One of the most, yeah, you know, I was early on in the history of this website, and we had a lot of fun covering that. It was like the first team we really latched onto you, onto uh, making a, a Cinderella type run, and you guys with that tight knit group. And I remember you as the little, you always had the sweaty head, and you were the point guard, <laughs> chip off the old block, Mister Curry Senior. How about seeing this evolution now from the player that you coached at Dwight Englewood? You know, forget the family side of it, but the player that you coach now to the coach who has his team going to the quarterfinals of the Bergen County Jamboree. And I should mention the first time that a father and son have both taken teams this deep into the Jambo. Well, I'm, I, obviously I'm kind of proud of that. I mean, he's really uh, come into his own as a coach, and I think that the uh, community up there has accepted him and the kids are buying into what he's what he's preaching, and he's got a good staff. His assistants are good. Dennis Gregory's been around a long time, and his other assistants are doing a great job. And uh, yeah, he keeps it simple. I, I think one of the things we, we spoke about at Dwight for years was keeping it simple and teaching kids how to play and not worried about so much other things, but really teach them how to play the game. And I think he bought into that, and he's doing a great job. I'm quite proud of him. All right, now ask him a question, a tough one. <laughs> How are you going to beat Bosco there, uh, Junior? What's going to happen there? Huh? <laughs> that is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> other than um, other than me getting on the floor and having Josh Williams and Eric Solder come back, it's <laughs> going to be uh, it's going to be a challenge. You know, it's 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 always good to face the upper echelon teams in the county, and thankfully, you know, in the league we play in, we're prepared each and every night. We we really haven't faced a a an easy game. And we've been in a lot of pressure cookers, so it'll be a uh, it'll be a tough game. But I told the kids today we have to play our A game, and if we do, we'll hang with them as best we can. You know, they're they're tough, they're big, they're strong, they're fast, they're quick. But in the end, there's only one basketball, and then somebody's got to be able to handle it and put it in the basket. So hopefully, we come out on the uh, on the better side of that. Yeah, it's going to be a big challenge. And listen, you earned the shot, Adam because uh, we should go back and, and talk about the round of 16. You know, I, I got to be honest. I was, I, well, I told you this at the gym. I said to your dad at halftime, I said, it's not a great day to be a Curry. You were getting smoked at the half, and I texted Richie over there, and I said, PV's winning by whatever it was, 13 and a snoozer. What happened in that second half? It was one of the greatest, you know, turned into a great story. Indian Hills coming back, and really, you know, a team that had never been there before against the seasoned Pascac Valley squad. What happened? There must have been some halftime speech he gave. Well, yeah, well no, you know what? That, that's exactly what it was, was. What you just said was they've never been there before. And if you've never been in those situations and you've never been in a pressure cooker and you've never been in, involved in a close game or, or, a, or the bright lights are on you, you really don't know how to react and what to happen. And we never really settled in the beginning. And we had opportunities. We had shots. We had played them earlier at home and we had success against them. And I just told the guys at halftime, listen, stop worrying about where we are or who we're playing against, worry about playing basketball and get back to our fundamentals. And, and they really came up strong. It was, a, it was a great performance in the second half by, by all of them. Absolutely. Go ahead, Richie. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to head towards Don Bosco. Uh, you know, the thing about Bosco that I noticed from seeing him last weekend is that they can really play any style. You, you know, you want, if they want to speed it up, they'll speed it up. If they want to slow it down and bang it inside, they can do that. Um, talk about how much more difficult that makes your job, you know, because they can, they don't play one particular style and stick to it. Uh, it it's very difficult and they present a lot of matchup problems as well. And, you know, the size across the board is, is obviously one of the big factors, but just like you said, they can speed it up. They can run with you. They can slow it down and play the half court set. Our job is to try to get our guys in the best, best position possible. You know, it, we, yes, they're Bosco. Yes, we have to take them out of their sets, but we also have to worry about playing our best game. And a lot of the times they say in football, the best, the best, Defense is a good offense, and we have to play that strategy as well and maintain and value each possession each and every time down the court. Tom, you got another one? Well, I, I go back to when we, we play teams like that. It's, it's, a, it's a big challenge for a smaller school, but it can be done, and I think that's the thing that he has to convince the kids of. You only have to beat them for a one game, and generally it's only a stretch of about seven minutes. 
if you can stay with them and, and make it a game into the fourth quarter, you never know what can happen. Uh, Tommy, talk a little bit about uh, your season and what, what's gone on this season, not just here, because it's been a nice turnaround for Indian Hills. What, what, what do you think has been the, the, the big thing, why you've turned things around? I think it's been on the defensive end. They, uh, we really had a, uh, an effort each and every night on the defensive end, and, and we have an, our own little, our own little game we play. If where if we hold teams to eight points a quarter, you know that's thirty two points a night. We should be able to win the games, and and the kids buy in, and every time they do it, they get. We, we kind of, I tell them we'll have a pizza party or something, and and they've really gone in. And to this day, they've had three pizza parties, which is not good on my wallet. But um, but they've really bought into it on the defensive end because yeah, you can have a bad shooting night, you know, you might make some turnovers, but if you can play defense each and every night, you can be in every game. And they've bought into that strategy. And also, it helps to have a thousand point score, a kid like Ryan Mornet. You know, he had three points in the first half against Pascac Valley, fourteen in the second half. He won the duel against Dietrich. He got Dietrich in foul trouble and eventually fouled him out. That was huge in the Pascac Valley game. And he's a bona fide go-to guy. I mean, you need the guards to be able to get him the ball in positions where he can do something with it. But at least there is a, you know, a viable strategy where Woods running through the big guy because he can play in the post. He can step out and hit that 15-foot jumper. The three-pointer he hit at the end of the third quarter was not only huge, it was the turning point in the game. I mean, the momentum swing and everything else. And you guys, you know, PV never recovered from that. But just talk about, you know, from a coaching standpoint, it's got to be a nice little security blanket where you get into a timeout and say, okay, let's run something for Warnett here. Well, it, it, you're right. You're exactly right. It's, it's great to have uh, a player where you know each and every time he's going to do the best he can to get in the situation to score for us. And we need a big basket. We get him, but the best thing about him is, is he doesn't force anything. He lets the game come to him, and it's not just one-on-one take it. He knows to work for the best shot and get in the best situation. And the kids, they, they've played with him long enough, and they've all played together where they know the right spot to put him in, and, and they know where they set up where he can drive to the basket for a kick out. But it is, and he, I'll tell you what, he's even a better kid off the floor. He's a, he's a Great student. He talked to Stevens. He uh, he's really just a, a fabulous kid to have, and he's he's competitive. And that's what you need in that circumstance. And he's a good interview too, which is always helpful from a journalistic standpoint. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's very good. We, we, didn't, we didn't prep him on the interview, so I'm glad he did that well. <laughs> yeah, uh, good stuff. Who, who else? Tom, you got another one for him? Well, uh, you know, it's funny. He, uh, I'll throw something back at him. He uh, he wrote, he put down that eight points a quarter, and, and that's something we used to put on the board when he. So he saw that for four years at Dwight Englewood. <laughs> right. That was one of our objectives, along with value the basketball, and uh, also uh, you know uh, play hard. We wrote that on every game, every time. It didn't matter who we're playing. So uh, maybe some uh, trickled down to him, but. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, and I think so. Okay, that being said, let me ask the question. And Tom, Tommy, how much? I, I mean, your dad's not going to ask you this question, but how much? Obviously, anybody's high school coach to a coach who goes on to coach at the high school level is going to play a huge influence on him. But how about from your standpoint? You know, you went through that great run with your dad. You beat Teaneck in in a jambo. Your dad is a Bergen County legend as far as coaching goes. Uh, how much has that helped you make the transition? I know you did a great job with the Park Ridge girls. The boys' side of it is very different because that hits closer to home for you. How about having gotten to play for your dad? You know, we're going to have Mike Darty on shortly, too. He also played for your dad. But, you know, you got a guy to bounce stuff off. you got a guy who's seen it all. How much does something that he said pop into your mind when you go into that locker room and, you know, you got to give your kids some instruction? It's, it's funny. It's, it's all the time. I mean, and it, and it doesn't have to just be because it's my father. It's because, you know, he, he, he was a great coach and he is a great coach. And it's, it, it's just, it's first and foremost right in front of your head. And I can still see him writing this stuff on the chalkboard and, and doing all that stuff. But it, it comes to, it just comes back to playing good basketball and playing basketball the way it should be played. And we knew how to do that because of him. And, right. And he instilled every single night, you know, 
each and every drill we did, there was a purpose, and that's what I try to tell the kids as well. Now, I remember him putting those things on the board, and we never got a pizza party, so maybe I'm a little lighter than he is, you know, <laughs> in, terms of, uh, in terms of what I, in terms of having fun with the kids, but it was, uh, it really is. It's everything that he instilled, not only as a father, but as a player, has, sticks first and foremost, and you can tell it because, Yes, uh, uh, Mike Doherty was one of his players as well, and also, you know, Joey Denise so used to play for him, and I now get to coach against Joey Sandberg, who coached for Lanico, and, you know, almost all the wants are the same, a lot of the stuff that everybody does is the same. Once they trickle down, they, you take a lot from your high school coach, and, of course, you're going to take a lot from your father as well. Well, that's a, a great answer from Tom Curry Jr., and now I have a question for Tom Curry Sr. Tom, all that – the budget over there at Dwight Anglewood, no pizza parties for the kids? What happened? Well, because it had to come out of my pocket. And, uh, I had all, they, and we didn't have pizza parties. We had to have some uh, fancier stuff than uh, pizza parties. Normally, you know, seriously, those that group of kids played so well together. It was it was an unbelievable group of kids. They uh, they, they blended together. And they, they, was, they never worried about who got the points, who did they just – the, the whole thing was we, and that, that's what made them a great team and uh, accomplished so much. And it, it, they were a pleasure to coach, and still, they've all grown into great young guys. So I'm always proud when I see them, and I see them a lot. A lot of them show up at Giant Games when, we, when we're down there tailgating. Just a great group of guys. Yeah, you say great young guys. They're great old guys now. Yeah, well, yeah, he just, my son just turned 30, so he's, <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have to remind me of that stuff, Corey. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a daughter in high school, so believe me, it, it is uh, it is definitely sobering, no doubt about it. But uh, Tommy, you l- l- last question before we let you go here, and I mean we could do this all night. Uh, it seems like we are doing it all night, but you know what? We got you on the line in an interesting situation. But how important was it for you guys to get off to that five and zero start? Because not only confidence wise in the team. Uh, you know, guys feeling like they can win and and start believing in that type of thing, but it also raised eyes around the county. I mean, you went into that first round of Poe game undefeated. I know you had a tough one against them last night. But, you know, it, it made everybody take notice of Indian Hills early. And that, I think, was huge, especially when you get to the Jambo uh, selection. You guys got the nine seed. That's a good spot for Indian Hills. And so just talk about it, the importance of, you know, because if you go uh, one and four in the first five, you know, we're not talking to you tonight. Yeah, I, I think it was – I think it was huge for not only them, the, the players, but the the programming community as well. They they had the mentality where, oh, okay, well, we're in Indian Hills, you know, we're not supposed to be here. When I tried to raise the ball early right away, and we set expectations where we wanted to get, you know, a good seat in the county. We wanted to try to host a state game. We wanted to play meaningful games in February and not just go through the motions and all that. And – they really bought in, and I said we could have, we could be very, very good this year and have a very special season. You can lay the foundation for what hopes to be a great program, and and you guys could be the catalyst of all that. All you have to do is try to buy in, and and that's really all you have to do. And it's funny that that my dad just said, you know, no one cared who got the points and all that, and I try to tell them that all the time. I told him, my father was my basketball coach, and he even told me to pass the ball to the other kids. Right. So if I can do it, listen, you you can buy in, you can do it. You want to make yourself better, but you also want to make the team better as well. So it was huge getting off to that start because we we won a couple games. We won a little Christmas tournament, which back in the past, our Christmas tournament was so tough that, you know, they, they struggled to win one game. That's now true. we win a Christmas tournament, they get, they get on a little bit a bit of a run. And they they really started to play with confidence in the beginning of the season. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a great point about the Christmas. I mean, you, did you you used to host while well, Indian Hills used to host that big Christmas tournament with lots of good teams? Where'd you guys go this year? We played in the uh, Pequannock Blue and Gold Tournament. We played against uh, we had Newton and Livingston, and two good teams. Two, right. two, two, two. You know, one uh, Livingston's a three or four group, and. Uh, and Newton was a group two or three, I believe, but two tough games, two two decent teams, and it, it really propelled us to say, okay, hey, we can we can play, we can be here, let's go, let's get on a little bit of a run. Yeah, and the, the smart scheduling, courtesy of Lorenzo Barada, and I only say that because he's a Pal Park guy, and as we all know, everybody from Pal Park is smart. I mean, that's just uh, <laughs> right. That's just giving information. Anyway, 
Tom Curry Jr., the head coach of the Indian Hills boys basketball team, in the midst of a special season, whatever happens from here on out. I mean, your kids are going around Poe College. You're getting a shot at the top seed, Don Bosco Prep. I mean, what could be greater than that other than pulling off one of the uh, stunning upsets in Jambo history? We wish you the best of luck in that endeavor, and really thanks for joining us here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, let's go, Braves. Hopefully we pull off a good one on Saturday. Well, our next guest up here this evening on Talking Hoops on NorthJerseySports.com really needs no introduction, but he does need a lot of work because our next guest has the longest rider in the history of guests on any NorthJerseySports.com show. I mean, in the green room, he needs cold water at a certain temperature. He needs fresh fruit, but he is kind enough to join us. Mike Doherty, the head coach of the St. Joseph Regional Boys Basketball Team. Thanks for hopping on here. Thanks for having me again, in spite of all my uh, requirements. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, you got to be getting excited here. Obviously, a uh, big game against Bergen Catholic coming up in the Jambo quarterfinals. And I know you, I've talked to you many years in a row talking about this Jambo thing, and I know you get pumped up for, you know, it's the greatest time of the year if you're a Bergen County basketball guy, which you are. So, you know, just before we get into BC specifically, just talk about, you know, St. Joe's being here in the quarterfinals. Uh, you're absolutely right, Corey. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked uh, off the record a lot just about how how special the Jamboree is. And uh, you're right. I mean, I, I grew up in Bergen County. And uh, I think for anybody who who is part of Bergen County, you, you understand that the Jamboree is a, a tournament unlike any other around the state. And so, you know, it certainly is always one of our goals every year to be a part of the tournament and, uh, and to try and try – and, uh, so as deep as we possibly can. But we're, we're really, really excited to be quarter finalists, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, play the best game of our uh, season on Sunday and uh, be moving on. Yeah, now, okay, now I tossed you the softball, but now I am going to give you the hardball question. Well, actually, I will set up the hardball question. He, our co-host here, Tom Curry, had in his past was a freshman basketball coach at St. Joseph Regional, happened to coach a kid named a young Michael Doherty, came through the program, and uh, Coach, why don't you grill him on how come he couldn't hit a layup? Well, because he was left-handed. That was the reason. It was Everything was uh, played from the different side of the floor for Michael. But he, he could be up, and he Michael was a great floor leader for us at St. Charles, and he went on to win a Jamboree championship himself as a point guard. So his history in the Jamboree is pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach, I mean, you 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 talk to him. I mean, you know him longer than anybody else here, and he's going into the, the quarterfinals against Bergen Catholic. So uh, what are you interested to know? Michael, what are you going to do to offset their size? I think that's, that's the obvious advantage they're going to have. Yeah, I've, I've given specific instructions to our kids that between now and Sunday, uh, they're, they're, to each grow, they're to each grow two or three inches. And if they don't, uh, you know, I mean, they're just not dedicated to the task at hand. Um <laughs> Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we've looked at a lot of the, the, the first game film and, uh, and even, even, uh, we went and filmed, uh, Bosco. Um, I understand Jurgensen can play for us Sunday, but, um, we, uh, you know, we looked a lot at, 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 at some of the things that they, they tried to do. And, uh, you know, you know, it doesn't take a genius to realize that if it's a really slow paced game and they're able to get, uh, into a half court set, we're going to have a, you know, I mean, all the time, we're going to have a, a heck of a time trying to neutralize the series who killed us the first time. And so, you know, as much as we're able to, you know, we're going to try and take a page out of uh, what Don Bosco did successfully, which is to, as much as possible, push the, push the ball, fill in some lanes. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're an athletic group. Uh, you know, we're obviously undersized and, uh, um, but we're, you know, we're going to have to put ourselves in position to, uh, to, to get some good shots and knock down some shots. You know, I mean, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to beat them, you know, in a, in a 43 to 41 game where we just don't have the, the size to, to bang with them and, and, and neutralize what they're able to do so well. And, uh, so we'll, you know, we'll try and, uh, you know, Pick up the pace a little bit, fill in some lanes, and, and put some points on the board. But uh, and, and most importantly, I think we want our kids to uh, to stay loose and, and, and believe in themselves. You know, so uh, you know that's that's kind of our uh, our approach uh, over the next couple of days. Go ahead, Richie B. Uh, I mean, you know, 
obviously to combat their size, as you talked about, you, you know, you're going to have to use your athleticism to your advantage. Uh, talk about some of the guys, the Kawhi Jeffersons, uh, you know, the world that, you know, really, really give you an advantage in the open court. Yeah, Clay, Clay has had an awesome season for us. I mean, you talk about a just a special individual having nothing to do with sports. Uh, just um, the the type of of young man he is um, is is just awesome for us to, to have as, our, as the cornerstone of our team. And 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 he's had a great season overall. And and I think one of the things we've talked about uh, overall is is giving. Uh, or, or creating more opportunities to get the ball in his hands in the open court and, uh, you know, and, and overall. Um, he, Clay has, uh, you know, he's an explosive player, and he's, he's just very unselfish, but uh, he's shooting the ball real well, and as, as you said, um, you know, in the open court, he's he's a super athletic kid, and, and he's making great decisions this year. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're, you know, really remembering that, uh you know, the ball moves faster in the air rather than off the dribble. And uh, if there's a kid ahead of you off the floor, give him the ball and force the defense to, uh, you know, to, to have to, to have to play that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's no secret that you guys play well at Round Pole College because it's a bigger floor. It gives you some more space to operate. You know, and it, when when there's more open floor to be had, it's good to be an open floor team. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that. You know, I mean, part of that is us remembering the proper spacing and. Uh, um, but you're absolutely right. We're, we're hoping that the little extra space on the uh, on the college floor is is going to be uh, something in our favor. You know, uh, you know. With all that being said, you know, I'm, I mean, Bergen's Bergen's had a perfect season if you take Don Bosco out of the equation. You know, and Don Bosco is a great team. So, uh, you know, Bergen's done an awful lot of things right. Uh, we're just hoping that um, you know we're uh, again going to put together what we know we have to. Do, which is put, put together our best game of the season to, to be moving on. Go ahead, Tom. You got another one for Mike? Oh, Mike, uh, I told you last year I said your son had to play more. and Because uh, he impressed me last year, and I noticed this year he's playing a heck of a lot more and doing a great job. Having gone down that route, what is it like coaching your son? How are you doing with that? Uh, th- thank you, Tom. Um, yeah, he, he is playing more, um, and he's doing a great job. Um you know, Patrick's an easy kid to coach. Um, he's he's very unselfish and uh, he uh, he's a competitor. So he, you know, I I think uh, um, certainly a chip off the old block is an intelligent player. Um, now uh, you know uh, he can defend. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I he's a great defender. <laughs> he, uh, you know what? He, he he likes to play defense um, and he's. He, he doesn't care if he takes the shot in the game, which is a nice thing. I, I think one of the things that's – I really enjoy coaching this group. I mean, I, obviously, I've been very fortunate every year at St. Joe's. It is a great, great community. But this group has been a lot of fun. These kids – and, you know, you mentioned Richie uh, Clay. You know, he kind of sets the tone. I mean, it, he does, you know, Clay's an unselfish kid, and I think all these guys are. And, uh, you know, if you look at, at our scoring across the board – um, you know, I, I think our leading scores have been 11 and a half a game, you know, and, uh, and Patrick, I, I think, is a, a good example of that. You know, he, they just want to keep winning. They, they, they really like each other, and, uh, and they play hard together, and, uh, and that, that makes it very, very rewarding, you know, as a coach. I know I'm, I'm getting cliche, but they're a good group of guys. I really enjoy being around them. Uh, Patrick Doherty's a soccer player. I've seen him. <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't pounded the ball once yet this season. I keep waiting for that crossover, and uh, it, you know. But uh, yeah, no, he's that's right. He's a two sport guy. Yeah, no, I, I, I you know, I, I didn't even mean that tongue in cheek. He's a very good soccer player too, and he's a tough kid on the on the soccer field for sure. So, I, I, how about uh, you know, you're a good guy to ask because you've been around the Bergen County game for a long time. Obviously, you played in it, you've coached in it, you've won a, you, you've won the Jambo, you won the whole thing. And we talked about it a little bit before coming on the air here. You know, the big three people have talked about, Don Bosco, uh, Bergen Catholic, and Teaneck, the three-time defending champion. Just uh, interested to get your view. I mean, I I know you're playing Bergen, and you're hoping you're going to go in there and win and and everything else, but maybe not even comment on that side of it. Just the rest of it, Bergen County basketball in general this year. The three teams up top and everybody else chasing them, as we've seen from the seeds, anywhere through four through 13 is a live dog in this tournament to at least make the semifinals and maybe make one of the big boys sweat. 
Yeah, I, you know, I, I think Bergen County is having a great year of basketball, and, uh, you know, people look at records and say, oh, this team's, you know, 11-7 and seven or 12-6, and six, and, you know, and I think it's just a, a credit to to the fact that there is an awful lot of parity, plus three outstanding teams. I mean, you know, you talk about three teams that are, are ranked, uh, you know, two of them near the top ten of the state, you know, and uh, a third one uh, probably should be, you know. And right. uh, so, um, yeah, you know, it's it, it's always a great tournament. I, you know, as good as those guys are, too, um, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I think a lot of teams are looking and saying, you know what, if, if we play as well as we're capable, you know, we can get them, you know, which is great. You want that. You don't want to have uh, teams going, well, you know, we just know we're going to get to the semis and then we're going to get whacked, and uh, but that's okay, you know. I right. mean, you want teams going at it. And we, we recognize with, with respect that those those three teams are, are absolutely, you know, the, the top three. But, I mean, I you know, I think my guys believe, you know, that, uh, you know what, we're, you know, if we play like we're capable of uh, and, and we put it together, um, you know, we're going to be there. And let's, let's, uh, let's see where it goes from there, you know, against Bergen. And then you take it one game at a time. Yep. Well, absolutely. And the first one pops up this weekend against Bergen Catholic for you. We certainly wish you the best of luck. And from our end, it's good news because if you win, you're coming on next week's show to preview the Bergen County Jamboree semifinals. And if you lose, you will be our guest analyst in the booth with more fresh fruit provided free of charge. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to be wanted either way, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Mike Doherty. I appreciate it. Yeah, the Mike Doherty, the head coach of the St. Joseph Regional Boys Basketball Team and uh, one of our favorites here on NorthJerseySports.com. I texted with you earlier this afternoon said I was looking forward to hearing your new material, and uh, I certainly got my money's worth. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Well, that was an interesting night of guests here on Talking Hoops. And, Tom Curry, do you feel a little bit older, a little bit wiser now that you've you got to talk to those two guys and realize what an impact you've had on, obviously, your son's life, but also on the life and coaching career of Mike Darty? Well, I, I've, I've been blessed to, to touch some great kids and some, be involved with some great people, both at Dwight Englewood when I was at St. Joe's and now, again, at Burgerfield. And uh, those are two of the best. And, and hey, maybe they picked up a little something along the way. You never know. But, you know, you got guys like Marty Rivard I coached again against and Jay Mahoney and Tommy worked for Pete Crandall. So, uh, and, and, De- and Mike played for Dennis Rossi and coached with Dennis. So uh, a lot of people contribute a lot of things to uh, – people's success and, and not just me. Those those two guys are, are just two people to be really proud of. Yeah, and it, and it's one of the great things about our job, Richie, is the fact that we, you know, again, it, it stinks that the years are going by so quickly here, but we get to see this happen from the outside, you know, where, uh, you know, we covered a Tom Curry Jr. while he was playing for his dad, and now we're talking to Tom Curry Jr. as the head coach of Indian Hills. I mean, it is a cool part of the job. It is cool, and it's also incredibly weird, and makes me feel like I'm a hundred years old. Um, uh, and you yeah, look that, you you don't look good either. I mean, that's no, no, no. I look horrible. I'm pudgy, and bloated, and it's, it's really the worst. The pits, I tell you. Um, you did but, you did beat Stefan Stefan Minich in a three point shooting contest though recently. Uh, I did. I did do that. I could still shoot it. Unfortunately, I get very winded after about ten shots. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's why, they, Bur- that's why they play. That's why they play horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. horse and horse and half court are the greatest things that have ever happened to aging athletes. No doubt about it. Anyway, the, the Bergen County tournament will roll, will roll on this weekend. Uh, a split quarterfinal slate as two games will take place on Saturday at Round Po College. Two games will take place on Sunday at Round Po College. NorthJerseySports dot com will be in attendance at all four. So we will have it covered, and then we will talk about everything we see next week here on Talking Hoops. Tom Curry, thanks a lot for uh, joining us here and also for having such a great coaching tree. Corey, my pleasure. And Richie Ballgame Barton, I know you're just happy to get through this one so we can do the girls' tournament podcast tomorrow. (laughs) I'll be ready for that just as I was ready for this one. Follow the leader.